um, and welcome to my uh, blog post. Um, today I'd like to talk about something that I think a lot of people are guilty of, and me, myself especially, um, and it's to do with, um, well partly to do with social anxiety, but also to do with the uh, constant comparison that we tend to have with other people, which is mainly created in ourselves uh, for most of our lives. Um, you know, maybe, you know, it could come from childhood problems or problems in, in high school or whatever, which you, I think were the triggers for me. Um, and the social anxiety, as I say, that that can bring. Um, I, I mean, I've been guilty of comparing myself to others for most of my life, to be honest with you. Um, and only now at the age of 29, well, about to turn 30 in a month, just over a month, am I now dealing with this issue um, more effectively? Um and um, there's been other, obviously other YouTube videos done about this topic um, of various people. But um, there was one person that um, I think gave the best example of, 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 of the folly of comparing yourself to other people. And um, his name is Elliot Holson. I'm sure some of you are aware of him. Um, he's um, a strength coach, a fitness coach. Um, and, um, but he also offers advice on psychology and, and, and those sorts of things. Um, and uh, he said quite eloquently that it just leads to this kind of masochistic um, way of thinking. It's like a masochistic trap where you internalise things, maybe from things that have happened in your childhood, in order for other people not to hurt you. So, so your comparison is turning it on yourself. You're turning it on yourself. You're giving yourself hundreds of criteria that you just cannot, you just cannot, you know, com com you know, you, you can't live up to basically. Um, and as I say, the comparison, the, the, these beliefs, these subconscious beliefs, because don't forget, 95% of our beliefs. And people are not aware of this. Most people aren't aware of this, but because I've done psychology and, and, and done quite a lot of reading on this, that um, and, and some psychologists kind of vary on, on what what they what they think, um, but essentially, ninety five to even ninety eight, ninety nine percent for for a lot of people um, of their beliefs are subconscious, and they're habituated through their emotions, and their emotions will then trigger a belief and an action. Uh, without them realising it. So, you know, what we have in this society today is, you know, and society can define, you know, different archetypes of different people and, and, and define whether that is cool or not. And it can, it basically, it, 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 it puts you into a narrow kind of, it makes you think narrowly. It makes you, makes you think that you have to look a certain way or be a certain way, uh, you know, you know, we see this a lot, of, you know, all over with different social groups or different people where, you know, you know, like you like different types of music. And, and there is this tendency to have to look a certain way and dress a certain way if you like this sort of music to hang around with these people or these people from certain social classes or, you know, whatever else, you know, hip, this hipster sort of culture that's been purported around or people have talked about, which, to be honest with you, I don't really like saying, oh, that person's a hipster, because, you know, they could say I'm a hipster because I've got a fucking jacket on, you know, and a bit of a beard, you know, a leather jacket. But, you know, this kind of need to have to look a certain way, talk a certain way, be a certain way with certain people. And we think that that actually makes them more attracted to us as, as friends or as romantic partners or, or whatever. But it's not always the case. And a lot of the time it isn't the case. And especially after you get out of the teenage years and probably... As I say, I'm, I'm 29 now, I'm in my late 20s. It doesn't matter so much anymore, that, that kind of constantly conforming to people. It's about being true to yourself. And you're never going to be anybody else anyway. You know, you're stuck. I'm stuck with me. You're stuck with you. And that's it. And you have to, because you have to convey your personality and have boundaries with people on what you except you know if you if you're strong and convey that strength in yourself you know we all care what people think we all care what people think but if you can sort of become more self-aware as to not 
you know, really have to mould yourself to, you know, be a chameleon and mould yourself to other people all the time, then it's going to help you. You know, even if you walk up tomorrow and you look like Brad Pitt or, or Marlon Brando back in the day, who were very, very attractive, you know, guys, you know, you, you, you'd be unhappy, you wouldn't like it because it wouldn't be you. Like I say, you know, there's so many different comparisons we can have with, with, with people, you know, money, social class, the way you look, your body, um, what job you do, you know, what your friends are, what you've achieved, whatever it is. And it, it makes you schizophrenic, you know, it makes you deny yourself, it makes you deny who you are, you know, it makes you unable to express yourself, it makes you feel ashamed of yourself and shame always leads to addictions and addictions negate negative emotions without feeling those negative emotions or going through them you're going to remain feeling ashamed going to certain addictions that aren't healthy for you that deplete you of vitality and the cycle continues over and over and over again because you haven't expressed yourself you, you can't you don't like yourself you know you're depressed and depression you know you know biologically in your brain causes a lack of dopamine in your brain and then the dopamine is needed from the synthetic addiction that you're, you know, having to put something in your body or engage in an act in order to get that dopamine. And I know I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but you get the idea. Um, anyway, this is my first video uh, done. Um, the camera is a bit grainy, which it was a couple of years ago when I uploaded a YouTube channel and I only did a couple of videos. And I don't know why this camera is really grainy, but it is, and it's kind of pisses me off a little bit. But I'll um, be probably posting pretty soon um, another topic. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. That's me done.